Hey guys, Joe by here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, it's been pretty hot out in the shop, so the projects are few and far between. I hope you hang in there. Thank you for everyone that has left comments on the community board. Thank you very much. Got a little job that I'm doing today where I'm going to do something that's second nature, but I think it's something that's good to pass on to you, so let's take a look. The part that I have out in the shop is a piece of aluminum with a radius in it, like this. One side of the radius is there, and the other side is right there. And you can see I drew that off center on purpose. But what I need to do is I need to true up this block to that radius, and uh, you know, put a couple features on there that would be rather well served being in line with that radius. So I need to find the center plane of the radius not the center point, but I'll show you a different, I'll show you a way to do that as well. Some people would say, let's just drop a little edge finder in here, move the edge finder back and forth until it kicks out, split the difference, and you have it. Well, there's a, probably would work, but the incline, the difference in geometry from side to side, the rotation of the machine, yada, yada, you could even reverse the machine if you really want to. They would say that the the difference in the geometry is going to impact the rotation of the edge finder and let it hesitate before it kicks out or resist it or have it not kick out. Whatever. I'm not going to use an edge finder. I'm going to use an indicator. I'm going to set an indicator to an arbitrary diameter, smaller than this, of course, much smaller. And I'm just going to put it within the boundary of this right here. Points of rotation have to be within that wedge. Points of contact have to be within that wedge. Rotation to be anywhere. And I'm going to make a sweep over here. And I'm going to make a sweep over here. Contact, contact, split the difference. Boom. There you have it. It's a lot easier to visualize this with an indicator because the indicator is going to be tangent at a certain point, right? One point. Circle to circle tangent, one point of contact. This does not give you the center of rotation of that arc. It will not. It will put you on the same plane where the center of that arc lies, but it's not going to give you the center of the arc. Construction-wise, geometry-wise, that center point can be found with two chords. This is just for construction. I'm not going to get into the trick behind it right now. But chord, chord. They don't even have to be the same length. But they do have to be bisected equally. And perpendicular. So once you bisect the chord, strike a perpendicular through that chord. Where those two strikes cross over, that is the center line of that arc. I don't need to do that today, but I thought I would show you both ways to do that. I'm just going to pick up the two points, get myself on center line, and then I can true up the block based on my zero point in the middle. Let's take a walk out the machine, take a look. Okay, the part just like I described on the board. Aluminum, big radius cut in it. I'm going to spin this indicator. You can see that the indicator is beyond center, and it's spinning about an inch and a half diameter. About a 40 millimeter circle, if I had to guess. I'm going to bring it down and make contact with this. At this point, when the indicator is in this area, you can go X axis to bring your zero in or your Y axis. It doesn't matter. But as soon as it hits zero, that's what you need to stay right there. So let's get this to read zero. Okay, zero it is. Don't touch the y-axis at this point. Leave the y-axis alone and go to your digital and zero your x and y just for reference. Okay, I've got a x, y, zero on the digital. I'm going to move the table x-axis. Coming over. This part is not clamped in this vise at this point because I know the pressure from this indicator needle is not going to move a chunk of aluminum this big. And when I come over to the other side, as I get close to making contact, I will start to move 
the spindle and look for that high spot. And there we go. Zero on this side as well. Let me peel back and look at the digital. If you have a centerline feature on your digital, simply hit the centerline button in the upper right or wherever it's positioned. Select the axis. There you go. When I move this table back to when the DRO reads zero, I am on the center plane of that particular arc. There you go. That's a beautiful thing right there. And back to the part. I now have my x-axis set at zero, and from there I can move off equidistant, trim up the ends of this block to center this particular arc, and I know I'm right on the center. That is a quick and dirty way to find it. Indicator works really well. That is the way I chose to do it. And maybe I'll show you this part when it's done, but that's not the subject of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well and happy and safe in that order or some other order. And uh, let's throw cool into that mix for this week because it's been brutal here in Texas. And uh, I tell you, I feel like I'm in the Sahara Desert. That's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Joel Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.